Welcome to another episode of the Mullet Mustang presented by Turn 14 Distribution. It's time to make some more NA jam by installing these stage two camshafts and valve springs from Comp Cams. Before we get started with all this delicious goodness from Comp Cams, PC over here is going to get dirty by pulling out the intake and I guess start pulling out those uh, boring stock bump sticks, huh? Yeah, that's the plan. We have uh, done this once before somewhat in terms of taking the whole front timing apart. So I'm, I feel like we're going to be a little bit ahead of the game, but yeah. we'll see how it goes once we get into there. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. The first thing we started off with is pulling both valve covers off and uh, Dave's been cranking away here on, on turn fun. like what, 25? Yeah, super fun trying to find top depth center on this thing. Anytime you're doing a cam swap, you're going to want to line up the timing marks to top dead center. You don't have to do that. You can just mark the cam with the chain, but I recommend doing it just because if anything slips off, you'll always know that you're at top dead center and you've got your marks lined up. The next step here is we needed this tool, which is a, what is this called, David? Chain blocking? Wedge or something? Wedge, yeah. 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 So I'm going to put it down deep into the, the crevice of our uh, timing chain here. All that does is make sure that this chain doesn't kind of slip back in once we take the phaser out. Yeah. And that's going to be the next step here is to crack this loose we're going to separate our actual gear from our bump stick and you'll notice i've already gone ahead and somewhat secured our crank pulley this is going to prevent the engine from rotating and don't ask us how we learn the hard way so let's see if i can crack this loose here get the rage going PT. oh yeah there we go oh, yeah. all right that's what a healthy Tim Hortons lunch will do for you. Oh yeah. Give you the power to Minus the off. wedges, of course. Yeah, Stay no. away from mm -hmm. those wedges. Went for the uh, broccoli soup instead. We've got the phaser bolt out now and you just wiggle this. Oh, of course the cam always loves to spin on us. It moved a bit? Oh, it did. It most certainly did. Not, oh, the cam did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the cam always tends to, once you pop it off, yeah. the tension loosens and yeah. goes to the path of least resistance because yeah. it's on the, yeah. One of the high ramp lobes. As long as the chain doesn't move, we're no, all good. I think we're okay. Of course, there's a special tool that you're supposed to use to remove the rocker arms before you go loosening the camshaft. But we watched a video and Comp Cams actually states that you can just slowly back each bolt on the cam caps off, starting in the center and just Work your way around. And as long as you don't crank them off completely, you're not gonna go snapping any type of camshaft. And I feel like we've done this on Japanese cars this way, and, and yeah, never it's been a problem. never really been a problem. So yeah. now what you wanna do is make sure you keep everything tidy and you know where it came from. So check out our awesome box setup. Yeah, you want everything to go back in where it came out from. So we've marked positions one, two, three, four, five for the cam caps and F for front, R for rear. That way we can't get confused because we've noticed we occasionally have problems with confusion. <laughs> mm. Dirty old This is what shaft. inferior ramp lobe looks like. Tiny little lobes. That's right. We're done with you. Little baby lobes. We're ready for some big power. Go in the garbage little baby lobes. As we showed you off the top, these are our big, sexy comp cams. These are their Stage 2 XFI cam. These ones are VSR, valve spring required, meaning they got lots of lift and duration, so you need to upgrade the valve springs, which we've done with their Beehive spring. And you can either go with their titanium retainer or their steel retainer. We went steel because eh, they're less expensive and more durable, so they'll Better for a streetcar. Uh, titanium saves a bit of weight is about all. When you do it, uh, we've also chosen to replace the valve seals. 
The car's smoking a little bit. It has a quarter million kilometers on it. We just yeah, figured startup, so. while we're in there, let's just change these out. So we ordered these from Felpro and you have to change your cam phaser or your cam gear bolt. These are a single use torque to yield style bolt. They stretch a lot, so you have to replace those. Back to the cam, these are designed to make a lot of top end power. So from 4,600 RPM and up, these are supposed to really open up the breathing. Guys are seeing like 35 at the wheel on the dyno, so we'll find out if we see comparable numbers when we take this to the dyno and retune it. Uh, and it's supposed to also have a bit of a lumpy idle, so you kind of get that. Oh, well, the internet's gonna like that. If you watched our Badass 2000 video where we did the valve retainers, you will know that we used this tool, which is a valve spring compressor. It's a universal type, and we managed to get it to work on the Mustang. There's actually a special valve spring compressor tool that you can buy online for the Mustang, but it was like 180 bucks. So we wanted to use this one. The only thing I had to do with the help of Vin, of course, was make an adapter bracket here, a plate, so it can bolt onto the actual uh, head here with where the cam caps were. Ooh, saw a little tension happening down here, PT. Well, thank God we got the breaker bar on yeah, there yeah. so nothing moves. Yeah. So we're compressing, we're pushing compressed air into the combustion chamber, which should theoretically allow me to now push down on the valve here. There we go. And now I've got a rather large magnet tool here. Oh, it does not reach on this side. Regroup. Oh yeah, look at that. Check that out right there. Our keepers are off, mm -hmm. which allows me to remove our valve spring. If you're this deep into your valve train, it's never a bad idea to replace your valve stem seals. And they may come off easily or they may be a little bit of a struggle. On the other side, it was back and forth. One would come off easy and then the other one would give me a bit of a pain, but this one, as you can see, popped right off. Nice. So that's the old one. It's got a quarter million kilometers on it. I'm gonna put the new one on, but before I do that, I'm gonna give it a quick little lube job just so it slides on easier. Here's a quick pro tip that we learned from Nam. If you put a bunch of grease into your keeper, it's gonna stick onto the valve much easier. So I'm gonna go down here. Oh yeah, that grease works like a charm. I'm gonna rotate it around. Mm -hmm. Slide the other one in here. Hope that grease sticks. Push it down. Oh. No, no go. Got to be down a little bit further. There we go. Okay, I think we're all right. Bring her back, Dave. Bring her back nice and slow. Yes, completion. Ooh. And that right there, is how you do it. We are on to the final valve on this side here. 11 down, one to go. And I'm showing you a quick technique that I've picked up. If the valve is sticking, I just found sometimes you gotta, as you can see, it's sticking. Now it's just popped away. I just continue to spring it. Give it a little leverage. Give it a little shock. Bam, 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 bam. And that breaks the keepers loose. And then eventually, loose. yeah, it breaks the keepers loose. And that allows us to Pull this down and pop them right off. Look at that, two in one go. Ooh. It helps if you have a very strong magnet. Last beehive valve going in with the steel retainer and while Pete drops it in place there, I'll just nerd out a little on these springs because I was reading the specs and was impressed to learn that the, the beehive shape of them is actually specifically designed to improve stability and reduce valve train stresses 
especially at high RPM with these big cams. And the wire itself is even sort of oval in shape, which puts uh, strength in the area of maximum stress on the spring. Again, especially at high RPM with these big lift cams. So more than just a stiffer spring. There's a lot of engineering going on there. And speaking of engineering, Pete's been uh, become a master of using these air compressor, valve spring compressing tool. He's, uh, he's ready for the big leagues now, I would say. Ready for that job at your local Ford dealership. Do you think dealership. I can try to do this myself? I think I may. Yeah? Yeah. You're gonna go fly solo We've on this We've been doing one? this dual people. Yeah. Me and uh, my partner here, but now I feel like I'm, I'm good enough where I can attempt this and prove to people that this can be done by one dude. By one person. Okay. And normally I'm the lever puller so that Pete can fish the keepers in there without the strain of having to hold the spring compressed. But he's, he's yeah. showing off now. If you drop this one in the engine, Pete, there's uh, oh, there's going to be hell to pay. Got to make sure you get the proper technique when you grab it. Oh yeah, look at that. Come there. Oh, it's getting away from me. It's in. Yes, people. There we go. Nailed it. This works. Finally! That only took like way too long. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a we're lot of work. Six hours deep into both sides here, which yeah. is yeah. Great for the back. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But now we can finally put the cams on. But before we do that, we're gonna put some assembly lube all over everything. Getting down to the home stretch here, folks. Time to lube up these rockers. Basically, you just don't want on startup for any of these parts to be dry. So we're using assembly lube on the rockers and on the cam caps and obviously on the cam when that goes in. Literally on everything. Lube your friction surfaces. That's uh, the moral of the story here. We should mention that CompCam does make a lube specific for this job, but we failed to order it. So we're using a generic assembly lube. Should do the job just fine. Here's the whole issue right now. There's a key. You probably can't see it on the cam. Let me rotate it here. That drops into the cam that needs to line up with the cam gear. And um, what you need to do is line it up the best you can in terms of just like eyeballing it. This one is up in the top corner here. So sure enough, it'll, that looks like I'm close enough. And then we'll deal with that when we have to put the gear on. We may have to rotate the cam a little bit once it's all settled in place, which is a bit of a cringe-worthy job, but we'll show you how to do that. Time to tighten these cam caps down. Starting in the middle, right, Pete? Yeah, working my way out here. Being very gentle, just kind of tightening each one slowly until it gets to a point where I'm happy with it. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna gradually just snug them down and then torque it to 89 inch pounds which uh, I have to know off the top of my head is 7.4 foot pounds. Wow, you're just a wizard with your math. I am a math ninja. You may have used that sweet NV Auto digital snap-on tool here. That, could that be converts. True. Yeah, that could be true. It's so light. Yeah. That. It is kind of shockingly light, isn't it? Yeah. To think that the speed that cam is spinning at is being held in by 7.4 foot pounds. Thank goodness for this wrench too. Yeah, she's a beauty. We need one of these snap-ons yeah. at the shop. Like, yeah. As expected, we've run into the problem where the key in the cam gear is not lined up with the notch in the actual cam shaft. So I know some people are gonna cringe at this, but we're not, we're gonna use a pair of pliers here to move the cam shaft but we're gonna do it in an area that isn't an actual wear item. So it's not on a lobe or anything like that. Yeah, and this is actually it. how Comp Cam says to do it. So Yeah, in their video they show us doing it the same way. So I'm just gonna grab this and try to turn the cam a little bit. And of course it doesn't go because I've got too many rags bound up here. You know what? 
Going bareback, PT. Sometimes you just gotta go bareback. Yeah. Exactly. And we're gonna just turn it. There we go. That may be enough where we need it. Oh, it's close. It's like supposed to be in the hole there. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna re recommend what I just did there, but Turning the it crank. seems to have worked. Yeah, yeah. so we turned the crank. Obviously, we have the rubber stopper in there, yeah. which is making sure that we're not gonna skip any timing. Yeah. But uh, that works. Great. So now we're just gonna install that fa new phaser bolt, and we can start putting some valve covers on. All right, that's 30 foot pounds, which is what you're supposed to set the phaser to, but there's part two of this, which requires another 90 degrees of torque. So I'm gonna go, all right. Ooh, that was almost 111, that's a lot. So that's 45, I'm gonna go another 45. That's good. Another 90, and we're good. I think we should mention that uh... I took the, the hardest job of all, replacing this you did. valve cover seal with a very nice difficult. racing blue Felpro unit. Check out each individual oh, hole now yeah. has a rubber Look at grommet that. in blue. Yes. Fully tuned. You've done a good job, Dave. I give myself a big pat on the back for that one. And of course, before we go putting the valve cover on, I've got the right stuff. Oh, you do have the right stuff. And you need to dab a little bit of the right stuff from Permatex here. Mm-hmm into this area and why I don't even remember why well just because there's, there's a bit of a break it's where the in front the metal. cover meets the head and All right. there's a little spot on the on the seal over here you can even see that little spot there that's what the, the silicone goes in it all makes it happy all very important things yes these are very very, very important, important. well now I'm gonna fiddle with this for about uh, 10 minutes. Yep. And we're gonna skip all that and show you the first startup. Okay, party people. Time for a uh, first fire up. What do you think, BT? I'm excited Ho and anxious. Hopefully you don't throw any cams at the motor here. Are we ready? We're ready. No, no, it sounds bad. That's why. Yeah, you could. That's, that's the lifters going. <laughs> time for take two on the startup here. We think the rattling I was hearing and panicked on last time was just the lifters that had drained of oil. So let's see if she's uh, happier now that we primed the engine. PT, hit you it. Ready? Yep. Oh, turning like a kitten. Yeah, look at that. Like nice work, Success buddy. Success coming Bam. through. It actually sounds very stock-like. It does. It's got a Holy little lope to it. Sounds good, man. And that's a wrap for this episode. Epic cam install complete. Next step is to head to the dyno, see if these bump sticks make the jam we're hoping for. Please, please make some power. Just use spray, you pansies. <laughs> it's the moment where you get to watch Pete lube his shaft. <laughs> you know I had to go there, Pete, come uh, you on. You did, you did. I knew you were going there, actually. I still chuckled. You should know me I, well enough. I, I know it was coming. Can't pass on the opportunity of making a lubed shaft joke.